the subconscious mind. So I post about this a lot on my Instagram for those of you who've been following me for a while. Uh, the subconscious mind and our core beliefs are one of the key things that I share about. And I did also touch upon it in the last workshop with affirmations as well. So we know that we have a subconscious mind. We hear it gets spoken about a lot, but sometimes we don't quite know what it means. We know that there's the subconscious mind and the autonomic nervous system and all the functions that our body does automatically that we don't need to think of. So we really rely on our subconscious mind to live. But we, what we don't realise or what we take for granted is the fact that the subconscious mind is just like a computer. In fact, it's a supercomputer, so many times more powerful than a standard PC, basically. It is so powerful. And it stores and records all experiences that we have ever had, including things that we have consciously forgotten about and not even aware of. Because there is only a certain amount of information that we can take in at any one time. There's a filtering process and there's only so much information our brain can handle at once. So by the time that you are aware of this moment and the next moment and the next, even if you feel that you've taken in a lot of your surroundings, it has already been filtered through your perceptions and filters before it reaches your consciousness. If your, con your consciousness as in your conscious mind that you are aware of, but your subconscious mind takes in everything. It also is a record of the past. For example, it remembers all experiences, all belief systems that have been imprinted on us and all emotional reactions that we've had. And it is stored like a super record bank. Every experience is recorded. And what happens is we formulate beliefs and perceptions based on these experiences and that therefore this determines how we perceive our reality. So cutting back to our core belief system, if you ever have grown up feeling lacking of confidence, very fearful, afraid of the world like you're not good enough, or if you've had the opposite where you've been very confident and sometimes you have to rein yourself in a little bit, or you notice there's certain habits and ways of thinking that you have. These would have all been formulated primarily when we were very, very young. So although the subconscious mind is always on, and we can always program things, formulate new beliefs and formulate new habits, what's key to note is that when we are born, from when we are actually in the womb, to ages six to seven, some say six, some say seven, we are in a very impressionable state because our brainwaves as young children are in what's called the theta brainwave state, which is a kind of a state of hypnosis. It's the state in between awake and sleep. And this is the state that is of only available to us as young children because up until the ages of seven, we have not yet developed the analytical mind and the filtration filters efficiently to filter out certain bits and get the logic, the analytical mind that we use that decipher, deciphers things and we look at what we accept and what we reject. It's basically a computer that needs to be downloaded. If you have a, a brand new computer and you have the physical body, same thing. You have a computer but with nothing on it, you can't do anything. It needs downloads to start functioning, the same as when we're born which is why the programming when we're very young is so important. So if you are around people, parents, friends, caregivers, anyone in social society in your close proximity, teachers, if whoever you are around heavily influences the blueprint of beliefs that you will formulate, which is why it is not, it sounds cliche because a lot of self-help tutors will talk about childhood but it's very much true is what goes on in your childhood particularly in those seven years will formulate the blueprint of your belief system but of course that it does formulate as time goes on as well but it kind of gets rigid and stuck in those beliefs that you would have taken on which you probably may not have even been aware of the conscious mind we only have access to five percent uh, we're only conscious in our conscious mind 5% of the time. The 95% of our personality and our reality is determined by the subconscious mind and the subconscious beliefs. So when you, for example, 
find yourself in the same repeating habit patterns. Maybe you're finding it very difficult to attract money. Maybe you've been feeling that you know, have, know, have no money, you're not able to attract any, you have no success with your job, or maybe that could be the same with relationships. But deep down, you have a feeling or a belief that maybe you don't love yourself. Maybe you're not good enough. Maybe you're not good with money. And that could have been something imprinted from your parents, from your friends or from society. So the reason why it's important to be aware of this is because the vast majority of the time we go about our lives thinking this is how life works. Whatever perceptions we have, whatever reality that we see through our eyes, what we think, what we feel, what we experience, the conflicts and the wrongdoings that our loved ones or our partners do, it's all their fault, this is how life is, and it's shit. That's how we tend to be go about life, and there's nothing you can do about it. But the point is, is all those perceptions can be changed. And it's important to be aware that when we are born, we are born with no programming. Some say that we have past lives and we come in with certain karmic issues or certain themes or th certain things to experience that has all a role and a pl to play. But primarily when we are born in this physical reality, we are programmed from the early, the early days from when we are born by the environment around us. And because everything is energy, we are all vibrating energy. We're not physical beings, we are energetic beings. Our physical reality is vibrating energy, but at slower densities, meaning slower frequencies, which make things appear more dense and solid. But it's still vibrating energy. Quantum physics proves this. Quantum physics also proves that we are all interconnected. And what we perceive and what we project vibrationally will come back to us as experience. This then goes into when you may have heard of the law of attraction and manifesting. What you give out is what you get back. So this is why it's important to know what our subconscious beliefs are or what our core beliefs are. Because whatever we believe is going to influence the energy and the vibration that we put out to the world around us, which therefore influences what we manifest. 